The best tasting citrus are from your very own garden. Citrus are pretty easy to grow, and with so many incredible varieties, it's easy to get jazzed about citrus. Hi, I'm Bill Cresha, UC Master Gardener here in Sacramento County. This video will cover citrus trees from the ground up. And you'll learn to recognize when you have to take action, and you'll also learn to recognize when you can chill. So let's start with site selection. Here at the Fair Oaks Horticultural Center, we get about 12 hours of sunlight on our citrus trees. But your trees will thrive with six to eight hours of sunlight. But you need to make sure that they get that sunlight all year long. Let's talk a little bit about slope because a lot of resources for citrus planting talk about slope. And you'll see the, the slope here. Uh, most homeowners don't have to worry about slope, right? Worry more about the exposure. Uh, try and get a south exposure for your trees. A west exposure is okay. But the key thing is to make sure they're getting six to eight hours of good sunlight every day. Drainage is super critical because citrus trees don't like wet feet. And so they'll get diseases. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. But if your soil is really bad, you can think about raised beds or you can think about planting them in containers. Okay, so let's talk about roots a little bit. This is a seedless kishu in a three quarters barrel, right? And so we put it in a barrel to highlight the fact container planting is really good for citrus, uh, but it's had a few things that I wanna highlight here. Uh, one of the things that's happened is we have good porous soil, but it's compacted down over time. And so you can see that these roots here are actually exposed in this container. The container protects them so they don't get sunburned, but ideally you can see where the shoulders are. And so you would want the soil level right about there so that those would be protected by the soil. And this would be an example of where you would want to take action. Okay, so let's move up the trunk a little bit. And before we get to the graft area, I wanted to highlight the fact, and it's probably hard to see on the video, this tree's already been painted with a whitewash, a 50-50 mix of uh, interior latex paint and water, and it gives it some degree of sunburn protection. Sunburn will dry up the bark, it'll crack it, it becomes an entryway for disease and pests. So that's another action item if you haven't done that. Um, probably needs to be done again this year, it doesn't last forever, but it's a really, really good thing to do. So let's take a look at this area. You can see kind of a shoulder here or a step on the tree. This is where the, the tree was grafted in the nursery. So this is a seedless kishu from here up, and it's rich 16-6 rootstock from here down. We don't want the fruit from rich 16-6 rootstock because it tastes yucky. It's not good. This fruit is fabulous, right? And I really want you to try it if you get a chance. But here we have the graft, here we have this. What you'll see sometimes, and we'll have video later, of suckers coming up here. You can see a small branch here. And even though these leaves, it's been pretty hot, we have a little heat stress on the tree, but you can see those leaves match these leaves here in the photo. Uh, when there's a sucker, you'll see the leaves are different and we'll demonstrate that later. So when you do see growth below the graft line, you need to take a look at that. That's a sucker. And if you're lucky enough to catch them early on, they'll be green. The stems will be green. You could just snap them off. That's the best way to do it. And the reason for that is because you're getting most of that cell material of that sucker off that stem, it won't grow back there. If you're like me and you forget and they get woody, you're going to have to use pruners and snip them as close as you can to the trunk. But pay attention to that spot because when the suckers start growing back from that spot, They'll be young and green, you just snap them off and you're done. Okay, another action item is pay attention to these things. See this string here? That kills your tree. When you start weed whacking around the trunk, you're making cuts into the cambium, the living tissue of the tree, and you're basically killing it. Don't do that. We don't want to see that. This is what we want to see. So let's move up into the canopy now. 
Okay, so as we start looking at leaves in the canopy, uh, you'll see on occasion things like this. Uh, it may be kind of hard to see, but there are little tunnels in this leaf. These tunnels were caused by a citrus leaf miner. Most of this damage doesn't hurt the tree. In some cases, the damage can be extensive or appear to be extensive, but the leaves are still producing energy for the tree and to support the fruit. So you don't want to cut them off. The other thing is you don't need to spray for this. You know, in our references, and we've given you tons of really good references on uh, integrated pest management, you'll see that for citrus leaf miner, it's a chill thing. Okay, so citrus have three or four flushes of growth a year. That's a really good time to go out and check for aphids, thrips, or Asian citrus psyllid nymphs, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. Uh, you can also tell sometimes if the new growth is kind of flattened out, that could be the beginning of what they call a water sprout. And a water sprout is a rapid uh, area of growth on a tree, and so the plant may put on one or two feet of growth in a week. That's not normal behavior. Those areas are usually pruned out. Okay, so here's a really good example of sunburn damage. Okay. Sunburn hurts not only the leaves, but also the fruit. Here's another example of a chlorotic leaf. In fact, this one just fell off, right? And you can see a yellowing area on the uh, growing fruit here. That's sunburn. That's sunburn on this leaf. Leaf analysis, by just looking at them, is really complicated and it's tough. So you have to be careful. Please use the resources that are out there from UC uh, because it's easy to misdiagnose issues with a plant if you're not careful. Okay, so here's some additional uh, leaf damage on this particular tree. Probably some leaf miner stuff, some sunburn, and color changes. Color changes are important. If we take a look at this Nagami kumquat, which is in full bloom by the way, and just absolutely gorgeous, there's a difference. This tree is probably not in tune. And so you may want to pay a little bit more attention to it. So here's a leaf that's intensely discolored, right? This leaf is not happy. And, but during the winter time, leaves will get like this. And in the winter time, it's called, well, it's not really technical. I call it the winter blahs. And that's a chill item. After all, it is winter, right? And so what's happening is, is the trees are just not picking up enough minerals and nutrients from the soil. So the leaves get a little off color, but it's nothing to really worry about. You really don't need to be dumping tons of fertilizer on your citrus trees in December and January. Don't do that. Just wait. They'll wake up. They'll perk up. They're not really dormant. They're still there but they're just not as happy in the wintertime as they will be in the spring when they produce lots of flowers and tons of fruit for you. But some color changes are really significant and it may be indicative of a very serious disease called HLB that we have here in California. HLB is carried by Asian citrus psyllids. So the easiest way to identify the Asian citrus psyllid is by the little waxy trails they leave behind. If you do find those, please contact your county agricultural commissioner if you suspect that you have those. Okay, we just talked about the winter blahs, but let's talk about winterizing our trees. Here in the Sacramento area, it's something you really need to consider. Here we have, we're not getting ready for a party, here we have some holiday lights that are on our citrus trees. These are the old style holiday lights, they're incandescent, and they generate a little bit of heat. And that little bit of heat will get trapped by a cover, a woven fabric cover that we use in the summertime to kind of shade our vegetables. But it's really cool because you can use it in the wintertime also, not to shade the tree, but to trap that warm air and protect, give this tree an extra couple of degrees of frost protection. Okay, so we want to talk about fruit a little bit. And um, I don't know if you can see in these photos, but this fruit is absolutely gorgeous as it's uh, maturing on the tree. Uh, but UC has a great publication that uh, talks about fruit scarring and fruit damage, and it's very diagnostic. The thing you need to remember about some fruit scarring and damage, 
there's not a lot you need to do about it, right? Thrips can cause some damage and scarring, roughing of the, uh, the uh, rind. Just relax, right? Wait for the fruit to get ripe and enjoy it. Okay, so I am jazzed about citrus, and I want you to be too, right? There's a ton of different varieties. UC has a great publication called Tried or True or Something New. And we'll, we'll put a link to that in this presentation. Please, if you don't do anything else, take a look at that. That will get you so pumped up about the different varieties of citrus that you can successfully grow here in the greater Sacramento area. And for all the Sacramento County Master Gardeners, I say thank you and get jazzed about citrus. Thanks for joining us, Sacramento County Master Gardener's YouTube channel.